On today's Fisherman's Handbook, we're giving you an inside look at all the must-haves when visiting one of our favorite lakes and fishing one of our favorite styles of fishing. First, Wade will give us an update on the status from one of his preferred fishing destinations, Falcon Lake. There are several places that I absolutely love to go fish for varying reasons, and Falcon Lake is one of them. One of the biggest reasons I want to go to Falcon Lake, it is the unquestioned opportunity to catch big largemouth bass. They live there and they live there in pretty big numbers in comparison to a lot of other bodies of water. But the thing you've got to keep in mind uh, about when you start talking about Falcon is it is a lake that was designed for irrigation. It is designed to basically have water come through. It's not designed to hold water and be consistent. So it goes through lots of different ebbs and flows in its life cycle. Everything I missed another fish here. right there, but he was uh, certainly not the right side. Uh oh. Three pounder. There we go. He's a little bigger than our little ones back there, though. That's right. He's been cold in tournaments, so though. He's got a big cold mark right there. <laughs> Got it. Same tree. Oh, you're a little better than mine. We Whoa. found us a double tree. You didn't waste any time. You didn't even come to the front of the boat back there. You said there's got to be a bigger one in there. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I've been out there before, you know. <laughs> Not your first rodeo? Yeah. I'm going to go That's back better. into that same tree. <laughs> I've tried that tree again. The cycle that it is recently coming off of is without question one of the greatest that we've seen in decades in North America when it comes to bass fishing. I mean, some of the five fish tournament weights were staggering. I mean, some of the, the catch rates were unbelievable. But right now, Falcon has gone kind of on the opposite direction. The catch rates are down, still catching some absolute giants. It's just in one of those cycles that it will be recovering from. It's always been my opinion one of the things that made Falcon phenomenal was the fact that it went through these so-called down cycles. Now keep in mind that a down cycle at Falcon Lake is still better than most other lakes up cycles by a long shot, but it is in one of those times where uh, it, it needs to go down. It needs to be a little dry for a while, let some of that vegetation uh, grow up. So when we get one of those big rains and it floods again, those bass can get into that brush and when, when we can finally get up there to them, they're gonna be gigantic. Case in point was the Scott Martin Challenge that I did years ago. A lot of those fish hadn't even seen a hook in, in no telling how long because the lake had been low, over 40 feet low for an extended period. And then when it flooded, it flooded so far back up in the bushes, you couldn't even get a bass boat up in there. But when the water finally began to recede a little bit and some of that brush began to die off and we could get boats over it, places were found with just undisturbed fish. And that led to a couple of years of phenomenal fishing. <sighs> Yeah, baby! Woo! That's a good one! <laughs> Spinnerbait just fell out. Yanyanta! There you go, Falcon, good one. Son! Mm. <laughs> now when you look at, at Falcon Lake, you better go down there with a little different mindset. You're probably not gonna go down there and catch 80, 90, 100 fish in a day. That's not to say that you're not. But really what you're going down there for now is those one or two bites of an absolute lifetime where you can still go and catch 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in bigger bass. That's what Falcon Lake is about right now. And that's what people should expect for the next few years as Falcon Lake begins to rebound itself to once again create big numbers of fish while it always has those giants. Fishing down here is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> More fishing updates from Wade and the crew when the Fisherman's Handbook returns. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Cabela's, it's in your nature. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Yamaha Marine, reliability starts here. And by Garmin, the power of simple. You just want to fish, not mess around with buttons and settings and such. That's why they made every Garmin Echo Fish Finder easy to use. You see fish, you catch fish, easy. Fight fish, not your fish finder. Get the unsurpassed power, clarity, and dependability of a Garmin Echo Fish Finder.
From bass and walleye to crappie in the great outdoors, you deserve more than old school aluminum. Reward yourself with the quality, performance, and extra room in a Ranger aluminum design. Packed with features, these rigs carry an ultra smooth dry ride and stable platforms. Experience a Ranger aluminum boat today. It's engineered to excel and priced to be yours. Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Yamaha VMAX SHO, the game changer. The pros knew right out of the first hole shot that the VMAX SHO was the real deal. VMAX SHO exceeds two-stroke performance, delivers four-stroke efficiency, and is packed with legendary Yamaha reliability. It's the faster, stronger, smarter, lighter family of VMAX SHO outboards from Yamaha. For camping, fishing, hunting, or anything outdoors, bring along Arctic Ice. Simply freeze these versatile cooler packs and they're ready to keep your food and drinks cold throughout your outing. Arctic Ice can maintain in a cooler 60% longer than the equal weight of regular ice and with no more mess or soggy food. Arctic Ice is clean and easy. Alaskan series can maintain a sub 40 degree cooler for days and the Tundra series can keep game frozen till it gets home. Preserve an Arctic refuge in your cooler. Choose Arctic Ice. Welcome back to the Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook with Wade Middleton. How would you like to win some of the baits you're seeing us use on today's show? Or even better, how about winning a fishing trip with me? It's very simple. Go to the Fisherman's Handbook Facebook page, like the page, and follow along, and you'll be able to be eligible to win certain prizes and possibly go fishing with me. We're giving you an update from one of our favorite Texas fishing spots, Falcon Lake, and giving you the scoop on some must-haves when visiting. That's the thing about down here, there's just, it's hard to get them out. You, know, you gotta, you know, people come down here and they, you know, they wanna cast, long cast into these trees, trees you gotta make a 30, 40 yard cast, or 30, 40 feet cast, because mm -hmm. you just can't turn them. And I lost that fish. It, 10 feet away from me. And it's just hard to get them out of this brush. Big line, big rods, and prey. <laughs> if you land half of them, you had a good day. There's no doubt if you're looking to catch the bass of a lifetime, Falcon has to be on your must go to destinations. When you go down to Falcon, you can catch that double digit bass on any cast, on any given day of the year in any given weather, weather conditions that you might encounter. And for me, right now, if I was planning to go down there, there's a few things I would always keep in mind. Pay attention to what the locals are doing. It's gonna help you guys traveling from out of state. Call some of the local tackle shops, maybe even book a guide. There's several great guides down there to, to kind of increase your chances to catch that fish of a lifetime. Mix up your bait presentations. There's one thing though I always have on my line when I go down there. I'm gonna have a big weight, braided line, and a big bite fighting frog. That scenario, that bait setup, that rig has produced more big fish for me on that lake than any other way. And I'm gonna target a lot of those hardwoods when I'm down there. And if the water just happens to have been on a rise when you go down there, a lot of the flooded green vegetation are gonna be a great place to go as well. I always keep in mind that spinner baits produced down there, chatter baits produced down there, big deep diving crankbaits, 10 inches worms on those ledges and those rock drop offs. There's a lot of different ways to catch them when you go there. But there's a few things that Falcon's known for. One of them, flipping and pitching into that tight cover to catch some absolute monsters. Oh, I saw that whole bush jump on him. <laughs> that was a good fish. <laughs> yeah, let me get some more big ones in here. That's a good one there. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that guy there. Let's take a closer look at some of the key things on Wade's list of falcon necessities. Fisherman's Handbook presents End of the Line, the gear you need to get the big one tugging on the end of your line. When flipping into the heavy cover, not only at Falcon Lake, but anywhere, Wade prefers to use braid, and his personal favorite is Sunline. Sunline has been producing braided lines since 1992, but back then it was only available in the U.S. to its professional fishing staff. In 2011, that all changed with the introduction of a new braided product specifically for the U.S. market called FX2. 
Created specifically for frog fishing and flipping, FX2 has not only become Wade's personal favorite line, but one chosen by many of the anglers that fish those power techniques, like flipping and frog fishing. Coming out of there. <laughs> That's when you need some braid That's right there. That's where the braid comes in mm -hmm. handy. <laughs> Ooh, wrapped. Uh, that's where the braid comes in handy. You can lie and say he was 12 pounds if he got away on mono. I was planning on that. <laughs> when it comes to flipping and pitching, many anglers, weight included, mix it up based on fishing conditions, but all anglers seem to have a go-to confidence bait. For Wade and many others, that bait is the versatile Big Bite Bait's Fighting Frog. Unlike traditional topwater frogs, this bait is designed to be used flipping pitching, Carolina rigging, or as a jig trailer. The Big Bite Bait's Fighting Frog can also be used below the surface to give fish a new and realistic look. The Fighting Frog features a compact body with small front legs for subtle action and larger back legs that have a great swimming action. When fished with a light weight, it has a natural gliding action on the fall, or a heavy weight can be used for faster presentations. For more information on this bait and others by Big Bite Baits, look them up on the web at BigBiteBaits.com. Go. Oh, there's a little better one. Get him out of there. Boy, he hit it, didn't he? Did you see the tree <laughs> shake? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, make fun of me. Make fun of you and you make catch a big one. I like it. Again. Right, man, that whole tree went to shaking, didn't it? It did, that whole tree shook before he got it. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture. Hold on, let me grab one here. That was cool. Oh. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more fishing updates from the field when the Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook returns. The Fisherman's Handbook crew trust Ranger boats to get them to and from their favorite spots on the water. Let's put your Ranger knowledge to the test. What are the four camouflage patterns available on the Ranger Tournament Series and MPV Series aluminum models? For the answer to this, or to find out more about Ranger Boats, visit MyDreamRig.com. has never seen a hook like this. What I thought was good before is not so good now. The first surgically sharpened fish hook. This is the best ever. In test after test, we have proven that anyone can set this new hook with half the effort of any other hook. That's money. Introducing the Trocar hook, a weapon for fishermen who aren't just out to catch fish, but are out to win. There is no other sunglass product on the market like Amphibia. Optimized for life on water and land, Amphibia frames are designed to fit comfortably no matter how your face is shaped, to stay firmly in place through your most physical activities and to float in water. See this? <sighs> no! Oh! I see them! On top of all this, Amphibia products are built to last, ensuring that they'll stand up to whatever you can dish out time and time again. No other sunglass product on the market offers the features and quality that we do. Amphibia Sports Sunglasses incorporates several new advances including maximum horizontal displacement lenses and a patented air cells that ensures every frame floats. In addition, Amphibia lenses are scratch resistant, 100% polarized, anti-reflective on both the inside and outside, water phobic and ANSI rated for protection. Amphibia sunglasses are truly designed for life on the water. Welcome back to the Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook with Wade Middleton. It's brought to you in part by Amphibia Performance Floating Eye Gear, because the earth is mostly water. Bradley Smoker, food smoking made easy. Arctic Ice, preserve an Arctic refuge in your cooler. And by Laser Trocar, surgically sharpened technology. 
as I wrap up talking about Falcon Lake, keep in mind, I'm still going down there several times a year with the single goal of, of getting those big flipping and pitching bites, taking big crankbaits, cranking them on those rock ledges, trying to catch those big bass. I don't go down to Falcon Lake right now like I used to looking to catch 50, 75, 100 fish. It's really set itself up for a, a desire for those guys that are targeting those big giants. If you're looking for a big bass, Falcon Lake is still number one on my lake list to go to. Now that we've given you the update from one of Wade's favorite lakes, let's get some insight on one of his favorite ways to fish. What we've got here is we're looking at a giant, I mean a giant sitting on a bed right here and we're just uh, trying to get yeah. her. She's yeah. fired up, she's moving around a lot. She'll bite. Oh, she's gonna eat it too. She might have just got a little aggressive there. Sight fishing is absolutely an addicting sport to me. I can never get enough of it. You know, there's something about spotting your quarry and, and positioning your boat in a place to get the best angle and then seeing the, the interaction between the bait, you, how you're working it, what the fish are doing, reading their actions and trying to trick them into biting it. And when you finally get them to suck that bait in and you set the hook and you see the entire action unfold around you, I mean, I get giddy. And it doesn't matter whether it's a 10-incher or a 10-pounder, I get pretty excited about it. There's two of them. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Get that pig in the boat. <laughs> Son. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> That's what it's about right there. That's awesome, buddy. There's just something about spotting my quarry and setting up and positioning the boat to be able to catch that fish and, and the whole process that goes into it. For me, I like it when I have that option to have uh, the sun kind of behind me or off the side so it's gonna light up the area a little better. Not always possible, but it's something I like to do. I like to ease down the bank slowly and quietly, sometimes even using a push pole to kind of slide down there without making any noise or any movement in the water. And then once I spot a fish, and when I spot them, a lot of times all I see is a shadow, or I see a fin, or I just see something that doesn't look right down there, I want to drop those power poles. I want to position that boat for the best position for me to be able to present my bait. And sometimes that requires moving the boat two or three times to get the best angle for you to be able to see what the fish is doing and how he's reacting to your bait. And once you get him to react, it's an absolute amazing thing, whether he's blowing it off the bed or whether he's nipping at it or whether he's picking it up and swimming it off or whether he absolutely sucks it in and it doesn't matter whether it's a 10 incher or a 10 pounder to me i'm going to get goosebumps because there's just something about sight fishing that is addictive to me it's something that i can never get enough of and for those of you that haven't done a lot of sight fishing once you get out and go do it i promise you you're going to want to do more and more of it and you're going to start marking your calendar off for those key things and one key closing thought that i'm going to toss out there make sure you've got a good high quality pair of polarized sunglasses. They will absolutely help you in more ways than you can imagine while you're out on the water. Yes, you can go see some, some uh, fish or, or, or what's happening in there with cheap polarized sunglasses, and you can even see them without them. But when you find a good high quality pair of polarized sunglasses that allows you to be able to penetrate down into that water and see what those fish are, gonna, are, are doing, it's gonna open up an all new world of fishing that you never knew was there. More insider tips from Wade and the crew when the Fisherman's Handbook returns. Kobe Kayaks provide the ultimate lightweight fishing platforms that will offer anyone what they want when it comes time to hit the water. Hobie Kayak's commitment to innovation, quality, and owner satisfaction is unparalleled in the industry. So when it's time for you to go kayaking, remember there's only one name to remember, and that's Hobie Kayak. Since 1996, Frog Togs Outerwear have kept outdoorsmen warm and dry, even in the worst of conditions. Now, Frog Togs have expanded beyond hunting and fishing markets and revolutionized the industry with their patented fabric system. Frog Togs are extremely lightweight and portable. They pack easily in your car, boat, RV, and even on your motorcycle. Best of all, Frog Togs are 100% waterproof and windproof, and yet extremely breathable. Check us out online at frogtogs.com. Frog Togs, stop the rain. 
After your next successful fishing trip, savor the flavor with a Bradley Smoker. They have a whole list of creative recipes for catch with a wide variety of delicious smoky wood flavors. Find out more about making your meal as memorable as the fishing trip at bradleysmoker.com. It's for those who get up early on weekends and those who'd rather rough it than take it easy. It's for those who know it's not just a sport, but a way of life. The new Food Saver Game Saver Vacuum Sealing System keeps food fresh up to five times longer with a rugged design and 12 volt adapter cord for easy use in the field. Ensuring your game and fish is fresh when you need it. The Food Saver Game Saver Vacuum Sealing System. Field it fresh, sealed fresh. After your next successful fishing trip, savor the flavor with a Bradley Smoker. They have a whole list of creative recipes for catch with a wide variety of delicious smoky wood flavors. Find out more about making your meal as memorable as the fishing trip at bradleysmoker.com. Welcome back to the Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook with Wade Middleton. We're getting an inside look and fishing updates from Wade. And there's one more key element to bringing in a big fish to your boat. You know, there's, there's a lot of things in fishing that I think are, are very important. Um, you know, obviously you've got to have the right kind of line, you've got to have the right kind of bait. You know, rod and reel is capable of performing uh, to the task when you're out there. But hooks are something that allow all of that to work better. Um, having the right size hooks on a crankbait to ensure that action. Having the, the right size hook on you know, any soft plastic bait that's going to allow you to get the right kind of action, but also give you the proper um, hook set up. You know, not overpowering, not having too big a hook, not having too small a hook. These are things that are, are so very important that I believe in fishing and it's often understood. Some hooks bend, some hooks don't bend. Some hooks you want to have a little give to them. Some you don't want any give at all in my opinion. Some you want to be smaller, some you want to be bigger, but one thing for sure, you want the sharpest possible hook that you can find and that's where a laser troke are. Uh, has, has found its way into my tackle box. There is no question about it that it takes the least amount of pressure uh, when you're using a trocar hook to be able to penetrate a fish's mouth and get a hook up. And it doesn't matter whether you're saltwater fishing or bass fishing in, in freshwater. You want a hook that's going to penetrate easily. You want something that's going to penetrate simply with just uh, you know the little subtle lift up because sometimes you're catching fish you don't even know bit. And that's where a hook really plays a big role. Brent Chapman, a past BASS Angler of the Year, has, has gave him a lot of insight over the past about hooks. And we're gonna spend a little bit of time on the water learning from Brent now about what he thinks when it comes to choosing the right hook. About time. Nice. There we go. Good work. There are some fish in here. Look at that. I, and I at least know how to catch some. <laughs> That never gets old, you know? I know. It's the funnest thing in the world. <laughs> First fish of the day. Fish, yeah. Trocar did the job right through Man, the top. All the way through. Look at that. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. When you want to hook one, that's where you want them, in the top of that head. And I mean, it, it did the job. It came all the way through. You know, and there, there's a perfect example. A lot of people don't realize this about a hook, though. But see how I'm really having to work to get that back out? Mm -hmm. This is great. You know, you want that good point on there, but people kind of forget about the barbs. Right, right. See that? I mean, that's that barb is what keeps them from throwing it. And when I got to get and really work that thing out of there, then it's the hook has yep. definitely sold me there. But pretty fish. Yes, it is. Now it's your turn. All right. You know, the trocar, before any of the public got to look at our hooks, our pro staff were involved in that. I mean, they really were behind the scenes with us from the beginning all the way through. And one of the things that we love about Brent is his input about hooks. He really gets into it. You know, he gets excited about fish hooks. He's always got a new idea or a new tweak or asking questions. Some of his background and, and some of the uh, information he brings from outside the fishing industry really has a lot of value to the fish hook uh, design, development, the R&D that we put into it. Um, guys like him that have been around a long time, that have been on our pro staff since the very beginning, they saw the first prototypes, has really helped us develop the line to where it is and make it a good fishable hook for just about anybody. Yep. Well, that guy inhaled it way down in there. Look at that. Yeah, he wasn't going to come off. That's the perfect example of, uh, you know, you don't need a great big hook to catch big fish. Right. That's a good one. That, you know, that's one thing I try to tell people when they're out fishing and just learning. Sure. You can catch really big fish on a little hook. <clears throat> But you can't catch 
just fish on a big hook, mm -hmm. you know, a little fish, you right, know. And right. the TK-130 is, you know, everybody knows it as a flipping hook, but I mean, I love it for everything. And it's just something, I guess maybe that old school deal and years and years of me fishing, you know, even before the days of Trocar, always a straight shank hook was, you know, what you hear, heard the veterans say and everything. But that straight shank hook just, I absolutely love it, you know, and, and it's a hook I try to use as much as possible, uh, you know, to get me by every day. Look at that very first cast. <laughs> nice. How about that? That's so, I mean, it just, that, that's unreal. So it, fun to fish. Those wacky fun to fish. Unbelievable. So, I mean, that, that just shows you right there. I mean, here these fish are here, right, but, right. you know, obviously they probably see a tremendous amount of, of uh, Texas rigs and stuff through here. And we've caught some fish on it, yep. but here we throw them something a little bit more realistic looking and we catch one. You know, some people, you know, a lot of times they're afraid of those little tiny hooks like that. Yep. But you can see it did, did the job, hooked him good right in the side of the mouth. Yeah. And uh, another nice one. Ready to roll. Nice. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for more fishing tips and trips with the pros. How would you like to win some of the baits you're seeing us use on today's show? Or even better, how about winning a fishing trip with me? It's very simple. Go to the Fisherman's Handbook Facebook page, like the page, and follow along, and you'll be able to be eligible to win certain prizes and possibly go fishing with me. <laughs> I got an issue. You are a cow. Holy cow, I gotta get out of the way. That'd have been a disaster. <laughs> I'm not used to throwing like 12 inch stuff like this. <laughs>